Hi, my name is Yosho. Today, I would like to show you a demonstration of Jabel CAP on Azure App Services. In this demo, I will show you how to create and configure the Jabel CAP on Azure App Services to access to the MySQL database. And I will also show you the good functionality of the managing of the Jabel CAP. Before starting the demonstration, I would like to introduce you to my MSRAM module. In fact, originally I created this MSRAM module by myself and I will use the setup script and the sample code in this demonstration. And in my demo, I will also show you the additional functionality of Jabo CAP, which is not listed in the MSRAM module. So, if you are interested in to use the Jabo CAP on Azure App Services, please access the, this MSRAM module and please try it. And if you find some bug or issue, please feel free to let me know. At first, I will introduce you an overview of my demo scenario. As you can see, in this 25 minute demo, you can learn the basic operation of the Jabo CAP, so please enjoy my demo. In order to deploy an enterprise Java application, we need to implement the Java source code. In this time, I already created the sample code and I will use the following sample code. This is also used in my MSRAM module. And I already installed the MySQL flexible server before because it will take a little bit long time to create the MySQL instance. So after I create the MySQL instance, the instance is located in this resource group and I will use this information in my demo. And finally, I'd like to introduce you the very, very useful tool. In fact, Microsoft Java development team had been creating this Maven plugin for Azure App Services, Azure Function, and Azure Spring Cloud. In order to confirm the detail of the, this plugin, you can see the following URL. And if the Java developer uses this plugin, the developer will be able to configure the deployment and deploy the application very, very easily. So let's start the demonstration. In order to configure the MySQL in the Java CAP, I configure the environment variable. As I explained in the before presentation that I already created the MySQL flexible server in this step, I need to configure the connection information in the Jabo CAP config. So in this time, I will set the connection information into the environment variable. So at first, so like this configuration, I will set to the environment variable. And then I will prepare the deployment of Java application. Just now, so I already cloned the source code from the GitHub and uh, there is a source code like follows. And you can see this source code in my Visual Studio code. This is general Java e application which communicated with the backend database and I created the RESTful web application as front-end technology. Like this, it is very easy to implement the RESTful application by Java. And also, in order to connect to the database, I used the Java Persistence API technology. So JPA is one of the so object relational mapping technology. And like this, we can implement the code very, very easily. And this code is the mapping class uh, of the so database table, and uh, this is the Java mapping class. This application will run on typical Java E application server. It means that, so not only Java CAP, but also this application will run on WebLogic and WebSphere and so on. So in this time, so I will deploy this application to the Jabo CAP. In order to 
deploy the application, we can use the Azure Web App Maven plugin, which I already mentioned above. In fact, in order to configure the deployment setting, you can execute the Maven command like this. At first, uh, I would like to show the uh, Maven plugin for Azure App Services. I already explained, so this is prepared for the web app function and Azure Spring Cloud. And before executing this Maven command, I would like to show the Java project configuration file as pom.xml file. So pom.xml file is existed on this and uh, in this file, so Java developer configures the project by using this file. So in this time, as you can see, there is no Azure related configuration now. Then I will execute this command. So if I executed the command, the command asks me some information. So at first, I will select the subscription, and after that, I selected the Linux OS. After that, which of the Java version I will use. In this time, I will select the Java SCA, and so I will configure the runtime stack as the JBoss CAP. And finally, so which price TI I will use, uh, I will select it in this time number one. Then I submit with Y, then uh, the configuration will be finished. And after that, I will confirm the pom.xml file. At that time, so as you can see, this kind of the plugin will be automatically added from the above Maven command. And in order to customize the configuration, you can change the value like for example, so if I can change the resource group name, so a little bit short name, and uh, yeah, if I change the name, for example, my name added, and uh, also so I can change the location. For example, Japan East, I will set in this time. And after I change the default value, then so I configure this value to the environment variable. So for example, so I will set the uh, web app name as this name. And also resource group name as this resource group name I configured and I would like to insert this line into the pom.xml file for example this is the so resources entry so I will add it this line so because I created the shell script file under the web app, web inf, and uh, this file. And this file will be used to create the so data source configuration for JBoss CAP. And uh, the data, data source configuration is needed to connect to the database. So in this time, I will connect it to the MySQL. In this shell script, I will create the, this kind of configurations. During the deployment, so I would like to upload this file too. So I add it to the, this resources entry. Okay, then after configured it, we can create the artifact for deployment by using the Maven, uh, Maven Clean Package 
then we can build the source code and uh, after that it will test and create the so artifact and after I create the artifact I can deploy it with the maven command by using the plugin so in order to execute it command maven plugin prepare this command so I will execute it this command So after you executed the command, it will take a long time, so could you wait a moment, please? Now, I can finish the deployment with success. In order to confirm the deployment success, I would like to confirm it. I will copy and paste this URL and I will access to the browser. So as you can see, the JavaScript web page was showed, so it is running. However, so in this time, my application can't communicate with the backend database. So in order to connect the database, since now, I will configure the database configuration for JavaScript AP. As you already saw, I uploaded the shell script during the deployment like this so in fact i added the so this kind of resource entry in pom.xml file then the script is uploaded to the startup.shell it will rename as a so startup.shell and so in order to invoke this shell script so startup shell script file during the startup time of the JavaScript app, I will execute the uh, so configuration command. And uh, so in order to do that, so I will invoke this command. Then the updated file is uh, renamed as a startup.shell and uh, so it is located on this directory. So I configure this and after configure the, this startup shell script file, then I will configure the MySQL connection information into the environment variable of JavaScript AP. So after configure this, we can configure the connection information outside of the application. And if you would like to change the database to the other database, uh, instance so you can change it very easily so in order to configure the environment variable so i will execute it, this command after i can configure this information i would like to confirm whether it is configured or not um, by using the browser so i access to the azure portal then so resource group and refresh then, JavaScript AP instance is created, and the result of the above configuration command will be inserted in this pages, and uh, you can see the value by clicking, and also shell script is also set to the this pages. Then all of the configuration to access the MySQL was completed and successfully. So now the application can communicate with the MySQL server. So I would like to confirm whether the application is running or not. So in order to access to the database, I will invoke to the RESTful interface. Then this kind of information is written from the database. And uh, for example, earlier, I selected the Asia then so the country in Asia will be showed and for example countries uh, Japan then I can see the number of the prefecture of the Japan like this now you can see the application is running so since now I will explain how to connect to the JavaScript AP in order to access to the learning JavaScript AP, there is some way. For example, if you use the Azure portal, you can access to the JavaScript AP. 
Hi, but so in this time, so I would like to access to the Jebo CAP from my local machine. So in order to access from local, so we need to create the TCP tunnel. And in order to do it, we have the command. So I will execute the command. This command is creating the so remote connection. After executing the command, so TCP tunnel port will be showed. In this time, 52611 is showed. And the username is root and the user password is docker. So in order to access to the JVC from local, I will execute the SSH command and six two one one and yes and the password is so docker so like this so i can access to the jbo cap so runtime server and for example ps command i can see and not only ps command but also i can see the log file for example cat server log is uh, it shows the application log of the so jbo cap then i could log into the system and so in order to access to the system i specify the minus l option this option minus l option i added so we can access to the Jebo CAP admin screen too. So I access to the admin screen. I need to add the administration user and the password. So by using this command, I can add the administration user and the password to the Jebo CAP. Then by using the browser, so I access to the uh, local host with 9990. Then, so administration user and password will be asked. If I enter the username and password, then I can access to the so admin portal. And sometimes this is very useful to confirm the runtime system. For example, of course, I can confirm the so status and also like uh, so data source which I created for the application. For example, so this is a JPA world data source and I can evaluate the so connection like this. Sometimes uh, this admin portal will be very very useful. If you access the admin screen so you can see so many useful information. So please try this way. Next I would like to create the deployment slot. Deployment slot is existing displays. So deployment slot, if you click create the deployment slot, so you can deploy the blue green deployment. So it means that so you can provide the services in production environment. Also you can create the staging environment. So it means that so before the production environment you can test and confirm and evaluate the application's behavior. And if you configure it, you can also like a zero downtime deployment too. In order to configure it, I will access to the admin portal and I will execute the add command and the staging. And the configuration is coming from the existing one. And then I can add the so staging slot. Now I could create the staging environment. So I'd like to deploy my services to the, the staging environment. So in order to deploy the services, I would like to change my source code and Ruby. For example, I implement the so hello endpoint. So hello world from staging. Now I added the new string. Just now, if I access to the hello endpoint, then so just show the hello world. And now I change the 
string after I deployed it, this message will be showed. After change the source code, I will configure the pom.xml file. And so in the pom.xml file, I will add the configuration which deploy to the staging environment. For example, this kind of the configuration is needed. I will add to this. Then if I added this configuration, this service will deploy to the staging environment. Then all of the configuration I configured, so I will create the artifact and deploy it to the staging environment. Then, so I will execute it, so maybe clean package. Then, so I will create the artifact, and uh, after create the artifact, I will deploy it to the staging environment. So in order to do that, so Azure Web App deploy command will deploy to the staging environment. So it will take a little bit of time, so could you wait a moment, please? So it finished the deployment, and so I will access to the staging environment. Please note this URL. This is a so production URL. It is not included the staging string. However, staging environment, the staging string is added. Hello. And uh, like this, the new string is added. And also, this is a staging environment, and uh, this is a so production environment. Both of the environment is running, and I we can evaluate the both of them. And uh, like this, we can run the production environment and the staging environment uh, by using deployment throw. And this is very, very useful for upgrading the new services with very, very safe. So please try this functionality. Next, I will configure the CI-CD environment by using the GitHub action. In order to deploy from the GitHub action, RBAC configuration is needed. So I will execute the RBAC command, so like this. I executed this command. So like this kind of information is displayed. So I will copy and paste to this file. So then I will use this information to deploy from the GitHub. So by the way, I already created the GitHub repository in my environment. So this is uh, already I created the GitHub repository for this services. And uh, in order to configure the access to the Azure from this GitHub repository, I will add the new setting. And so if I access to the setting, then so I can see the secret menu. And then new repository secret will be shown. So I will add it this information to this with Azure credentials name is here and I add it to the secret. Then I access to the top of the repository. Then I can see the workflow directory and the GitHub directory. In this directory, I already created the so YAML file, and uh, so in the YAML file, I wrote the deployment setting, so like a so CI/CD setting, and uh, as you can see in this file, so Azure creden credential is already loaded. So from this GitHub action definition, it can access this Azure. Then so all of the configuration was done. So I will modify the source code. So if I access to this, so hello endpoint, just now it was loading the staging. So I replace the string to CI, so CD. Then after that, so I will commit. So we add this and git commit and I said change 
ストリング、試合、試合。And then I will push this code, change the code to the public repository. Okay, so it will be uploaded. So just confirm the source code, then rest endpoint, the source code and change. Then automatically the GitHub action is starting. As you can see, so change, change the string to the CI CD. Then just now, so build is running already. So Azure login had finished, and、uh, just now, Maven clean package is、uh, executing. So it seems that so just now it finished、uh, with success. Then, so I access to the endpoint, hello endpoint. Yeah, just now, so the string had changed. So, like this, so we can configure the CI CD process by using the GitHub action. So, of course, so we can configure any other CI CD environment too. However, so、um, very, very useful functionality. So, please configure the CI CD environment. This concluded my demonstration. How was my demo? I hope you could run the overview of the JVO CAP on Azure App Services from my demo. If you are interested in, please try it. Thank you so much.